mother Tell your children not to walk my way Tell your children not to hear my words What they be Hello there, Sir from 17 once again bringing you the very start of my Fear 3 Insane Difficulty video walkthrough. And this is the first interval entitled Escape. And after the cutscenes, which I'm going to be trimming out as best I can, you're going to pick up the earpiece and you're going to see your brother who somehow you killed and is still back and blah blah blah, the story makes no fucking sense, so don't even try. But you are once again in the position of the point man. The, the main protagonist from Fear 1 and Fear Files, even though they're not really Fears, them ones. But this is produced by Day One Studios, the people that ported the original Fear to the Xbox 360 and the people be responsible for uh, Fear Files, the extraction and the Perseus mandate. So the first thing you may notice is this doesn't look a hell of a lot like Fear. It doesn't really feel a hell of a lot like Fear when it comes to the atmosphere and everything. And the main reason for this is because it's a completely different developer. Monolith are the people that created Fear and the people that do it best. This is kind of the equivalent of, you know, the Infinity Ward and the Treyarch thing where Infinity Ward were renowned for doing the really good stuff and Treyarch were kind of rehashing and not doing so great stuff. Well, Day One Studios are kind of the Treyarch in this analogy, although Treyarch have proven themselves now. We, we don't shit on them as much. Unfortunately, Day One quite... I wouldn't say have. And uh, the main reason for this is because this is a good game. This is a fun game, but this is nowhere near as fucking good as Fear 1 or Fear 2. So I've got to get that out as fast as I can. I'm also going to apologise in advance because I do play this mission a lot like a bitch. And the main reason for this is I'm defensive, I'm very tentative. And it's because I was going for the, the extremist achievement where you do a level on insane without being killed or reloading a checkpoint. So when you play this, you don't have to be as tentative as I am. You can be a lot more aggressive, but you'll notice I do stay back. I do stay in cover a lot. And this is something that is going to be less of in, in future levels when I get a little, you know, when I can relax and just beat the game. But on this one here, I was definitely taking my time, definitely going for that achievement. So just so you know. But the cover to, to beating the cover, <laughs> the the key to beating this game really is always carrying two good weapons that complement each other. It's completely preference which ones you choose to use, and uh, always keep your flashlight on as best you can because it will make the game a lot more bearable. Because this is a dark game, this is a game that tries to get really atmospheric, and all it achieves is that you can generally never see what the fuck is shooting you. So I would definitely say keep your flashlight on as best as you can. And uh, the cover system as well. This uses an interesting the first person cover system. It's a little bit like Killzone. Uh, the only difference is it works. And uh, why I say that is because the, the cover on Killzone was fucking atrocious. Well, on this game, you, you press your, your analog in, you, you hug into the wall. And what happens is there's certain pieces of cover that work really well. There are other pieces of cover that work atrociously. And it's kind of all about experience and playing the game to, to which you, you learn which ones are better than others. Because sometimes you'll be in cover, you'll be able to see over the cover and kill all the enemies. And for some reason they can't shoot you. And other times they will light you up like a motherfucker. And there doesn't seem to be any real logic to it. And... Um, my best advice for it is is make sure you're using a good pad because my pad's kind of old the analog stray like bitches so when I was in cover when you push forward on the the analog it actually raises your head out of cover so you can get a better shot and if you lightly brush your analog it will push you up and enable you to keep popping up and down and things the only problem if you've got a pad like mine is it was doing that without me wanting it to do it so yeah be careful of that kind of bullshit but this game is easy it's very simple. Uh, the first four levels are, are absolute cake. The the fifth level is quite challenging because you're introduced to the face commanders and there's a couple of bullshit moments. And then the hardest level after that is the airport, which is probably the hardest level of the game. Everything else is very simple as long as you take it slow, as, as long as you you make use of your slow motion ability. And as if you've played any first person shooters before, you should have no trouble with this one. And I mean, Fear 1, man, I don't know if you've played it, who's listening to this, you, the masses, the mysterious unknown, the incognitos. Fear 1 was a very challenging game. I originally played it on the PC, and I and I loved it. And I, I bought the, I say I bought, I borrowed the PC, the, the Xbox 360, sorry, port of the game, and it was nowhere near as good, it didn't look anywhere near as sharp, and because it had been a couple of years since I played it on the PC, the game looked old, the game looked tired. It looked like a pair of corduroy trousers on some old 
the pedestrian guy on a bus who was just, you know, fucking dozing with his flat cap. It didn't look like it had anything really. And I've got really good fond memories of that game. And that game on Extreme was really difficult. And the reason why was if you weren't in slow motion and there was one guy looking at you, you were dead. That's how it worked. You died. There was none of the fucking messing about with the screen. There was none of, you know, the regenerative health or any of these new tropes that have come through modern games. You died. You had health packs, you had a hundred life, just like Doom, and they stripped you down so quickly, it was like, you know, one of the atrocious scenes from Showgirls. It was just fucking nothing you can do about it. This game, nowhere near as strict. Also, every single moment of, of this campaign, when Alma turns up and she starts doing a little, are you afraid yet, have we got this nice and spooky enough for you, have you filled your pants moments, you are never in trouble. Thus, all the fear that they could have elicited is completely neutralised by the fact you are never in danger when Alma turns up. She will never kill you, she will never damage you, she will never put you in a situation where you will face death. The only things that can kill you are the soldiers, are like explosives and all that kind of bullshit, and the, the creeper guy who stalks you, which is an invisible phantom that shows up every so often and you have to do a really contrived fucking slow motion walk section and he attacks you, but we'll leave that for later on. That guy right there with the red on his clothing, he is a shotgun dude. You do not want him anywhere up in your face or he will do some serious damage. Also, the grenades that the enemies throw are super accurate. So if you see a grenade come over to you when you're in cover, don't grin and bear it. Don't hope you're going to survive it because nine times out of ten, it's going to kill you because they're far too accurate with the grenades. They're, they're like the, the worms off worms. When they just looked up into the sky, threw the grenade, the wind took it, it bounced off several things and landed next to you, and you're like, what the fuck? They're just like that, so be very careful. But this room here is the first challenging room of the game, because they spawn on the catwalks above you. There's about maybe 10 to 15 enemies that spawn, so there's definitely a dense amount of them. And I don't know if you can push the spawn so that they stop coming, or if it's just a moment where a handful will come, but... I generally stay in cover on one of these bollards and I utilise the, the cover mechanics against the enemies and just keep picking them off with the submachine gun. You'll also notice that my slow motion is, is full, I think, and what, what that is is there is a levelling, a progressive levelling system in this game, and um, when you play the single player you, you level up and every level you get new abilities and uh, it enables you to take more damage, it enables you to carry more grenades, it enables you to to have more bullets in your guns and have longer slow motion and unfortunately you can't play the game on insane without this level this progressive system because what happens is if you were to start a new character you'd have to unlock insane and playing the other difficulty levels your character up so it's this catch 21 situation so i wanted to do a guide from fresh but i couldn't do it because the game wouldn't allow it and thus I'm about level 16, and by the end of the game, I will hit level 21, so I will be max. But don't worry, because if you're playing this just for the achievements, you're going to do that anyway, and you're going to be able to do it quite simply by watching this guide. Um, I would definitely say don't go for the scores on Insane, although the scores will happen, because you get a, a massive bonus for beating it on Insane per level. It's 15,000 points for doing it. If you don't die, I think you get another 15,000 or something like that because it's on insane, because there's a difficulty multiplier. And if you just, you know, keep going for the challenges, you'll probably do the scores quite easily. I think I get two of them on, on my insane run, but don't aim for them. The game will punish you if you don't play it correctly, and if you're dallying around trying to, you know, do fancy shit, you're going to die. But you'll also notice I'm using the pistol a lot, and the reason for this is uh, the shotgun I personally think is pretty fucking useless. Unless they're super close to you, and unless they're those stupid black dog things, the shotgun is just not needed. I will hold on to the pistol gladly because it's accurate and it's a one to two bullet headshot kill. But the assault rifle that I'm carrying, the submachine gun, the brags. This is probably the workhorse of the game. You will find it on pretty much every chapter. It's super useful, it's accurate, and it comes with a whole bunch of ammo, so just utilize it until you get the triple burst rifle, which will then replace this. But uh, I mean, I did enjoy this game. I am a massive fear fan for anybody wondering. I played the shit out of the first one, I played the shit out of the second one. I didn't really like the multiplayer on the second one because it was kind of garbage. Um, Fear Files I did play, but I did think that they were weak, I didn't think they were scary, I think they kind of lost something, and that's when I was educated on the fact that Monolith had nothing to do with it. And uh, Monolith are the people that make Condemned, so they, this is a, a development team that know exactly what they're doing when they're making creepy, you know, industrial and urban environments, and they're really good at making stuff look shitty and disuse and, and stuff like that. 
And uh, this game kind of has it a little bit, but personally, the visuals, the gameplay, everything about this game is a step down from Fear 2, because I love Fear 2. I actually played it the other day, and it holds up surprisingly well. The only thing that I found bad about Fear 2 was the view kick. You get kicked like a motherfucker when they shoot you. It's unbelievable. But anyhow, keep picking people off. Uh, this guide will not show you the, the location of all the Alma dolls. The reason for this is they're randomly placed on the level. I think there's three possible locations for them, and I don't know them all. Uh, I do pick them up on three or four levels, so you will be able to find some of them, just not all of them. And uh, this section right here, when you pull this switch, it's going to open a door, and this is another gunfight. You notice I'm backing up like a pussy because I'm trying to get this achievement. Uh, the grass, the, the grass, the grass is always greener on the other side, and I don't know why I fucking said grass, I meant glass. Uh, the glass in the window is, I think, impenetrable. There's some glass they can shoot through, there's some glass they can't. So in this room right now, you are safe. The only enemies that will attack you will come from the right, where that door opened up. And as you can see, you can't shoot through the glass, it's only the opening that they can hit you from. And I've moved back so that I can wait and pop out with my slow-mo and clean these guys up like I just did then. It sounds silly, but always aim for the face. It's going to save you ammunition, it's going to kill them quicker, and it's going to enable you to use your slow-mo a lot more because you're not wasting precious seconds of it by shooting them in the body. And the spawns on this game are kind of crazy, so be very careful when you push forward because... Uh, in my experience with Fear 3, I have been spawned on, I have had things spawn in front of me, I have physically seen the spawning happening, and on Insane, when you're that close to an enemy, they're probably going to kill you. So you want to be as, 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 as careful as you possibly can. But, um, be under no illusion, people, this is not a Call of Duty on Veteran, this is not, you know, Ninja Gaiden 2 on Master Ninja, this is a very simple, rudimentary first-person shooter, and if you have any knowledge of the Fear series, you're gonna walk it. The only, the only times when it becomes remotely difficult is when it puts you in a situation where you're up against things that take far too much damage and they kill you far too quickly, and there's only about three sections like that in the game, so take a lovely deep breath and enjoy the ride because this is a pretty fun game on its hardest difficulty. It's uh, it's not frustrating. It's it's not you know obnoxious. It's pretty fair for the most about it. There's probably only one section of the game that I think is broken, and I managed to do it first time this time around. But when I played on Fearless, which was my first run through of the game, I had absolute hell on that section. So I'm so glad I did it first time. And uh, for anybody who's played the game and is wondering, oh what's what's this section, Chris? I don't want to wait for five videos for you to tell us. Um, it is the bit where you have to use the corrugated door that goes up with the button and then you have to call it to go back down and you get attacked by the black dogs. That is broken, that. You can die so quickly on that moment, it's, it's horrific. But, uh, this little sorting office here, this post office area, whatever the hell it is, there's a bunch of guys in here, there's about three or four of them, and you've got flashbangs and grenades. So if you throw your flashbang, it'll tell you if there's anybody near it, because it'll come up with a challenge telling you you flash somebody, and it will also stun them for a few precious seconds, and you can go around and finish them off. So right there, I know I've stunned one person. I also threw a grenade, though, so he's probably in pieces right now. He's probably jibbed a little bit. Oh no, he's still there. I get to shoot him in the face for his trouble. But uh, just take it slow. Whenever you're pushing through an area like this, be very careful because the AI on this game is pretty clever. They will stack up into cover, they will flank you, they will hide, they will camp, they will be bitches. And uh, if you push forward too quickly, you're probably going to get a game over screen. So he always does that when you move down that corridor. So be very aware that that door is going to open and you either kill him or he kills you. It's that simple. And uh, just keep pushing forward. And. Um, if your torch starts messing about or if you have to walk, it means that it's a scary section and there's nothing you can do. It also means there's nothing that can hurt you, so don't be afraid, it's just a game. Thanks for watching the first part, anyhow people, and you take care now.